Man, I have gotten used to Caleb <laughs> running that sound booth back there, and I'm getting winded going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are, once again, we are so honored uh, to uh, have the Lovins family with us. I'm kind of saddened, but glad for Josh, uh, Brother Josh, Miss Nikki. They, they have their own ministry now in Missouri. And uh, so with Missouri, you know, that's not like... No, it's not like Fort Wayne, you know, just can't just run down here. Uh, and then they were up, actually, they, they were in Anderson, kind of northern Indianapolis, and so that was even easier for them. But now they're in Missouri, so, uh, but we're glad, we're thankful that God has gifted many in our church to be able to sing. And, and I, we did this last year. We used our church family, and so we're thankful for that. Uh, most everybody here has... Um, been here perhaps we have a few new um, but so I want to take proper introduction uh, Pastor Lovins I miss Wendy we met uh, back in 2001 and uh, and so um, we had come back from school and and the church that I had started at Grace Baptist Church up in Hoagland area uh, while while I was away you know they never did find a pastor it was a small work and I was bivocational whoever was going to go there probably would have had to have been bivocational other unless they were just independently wealthy uh, but and and so uh, when I finished school I, I went back and um, they were only meeting Sunday school and Sunday morning Sunday school Sunday morning it's like come on y'all uh, but that's all they were doing I said well okay well we're gonna we're gonna go find a place to worship and the Lovins were out they had just started in February of 01 uh, out at the fairgrounds Allen County Fairgrounds and uh, they were meeting on Sunday obviously but then the, when they started their fair the fairgrounds was taken on Wednesday so they started on on Thursday night and it was like hey we can do that so on Thursday nights we go out there and we just built a friendship and uh, and so then we ended up our church we, we pushed it for a while to 2004 just uh, circumstances many of you know but anyway and so we we uh, sold our building and uh, everything that that we could we offered up to them they had gotten their new building the building they're in now they are in the middle of remodeling uh, they later on uh, had a fellowship hall and a Christian school. I mean, it was just a very, very um, nice facilities. And uh, But anyway, so we stayed there until God called us here. And uh, so we, we may remain friends and have had uh, Lovins here for all these years, a special friendship. And uh, so we're thankful that he is willing to leave his pulpit and his church to come and and minister and be a blessing to us and so pastor i know god's laid something on your heart we've been praying praying so you come share what god's laid on your heart for us today thank sir. you brother kemp appreciate that we look forward to always being here with you all yes sir we love you people mentioned in Sunday school love your pastor and Miss Felicia and we have been friends for many years and uh, some of our people have already been texting this morning I reminded a few that we're on a little bit different time schedule and so right in the middle of church we got a text from one of our people and we start at 10 a.m. Sunday school 11 church and so I reminded a few we're 30 minutes ahead of you so you all be nice and because uh, we got some people just honoring enough they will text me on purpose knowing I'm in church or maybe even call hoping my phone would ring right in the middle and embarrass us and we've enjoyed being here 2008 I keep a record of every message when I preach out and around I I remember when we first got saved we've had a in our church there'd be a few evangelists that would come every year and they preach the same message messages every year and I just made up my mind that if God ever opened the door for me to be able to uh, preach in other places I would
wouldn't want to be guilty of only having seven messages. So I, uh, I have kept record of, of every message that I've ever preached here, as well as other places. I always like to stay fresh. And yeah, your file goes back to 2008. And I think there's only like uh, three, to, maybe three to five years from 2008 until now uh, that you've had other speakers that, that came in. I was only bitter about that for a little while, and, but I got over it, and I never take for granted. I really don't. I never take for granted, and you need to have variety, and I understand that in preaching, but at the same time, and with your speakers, um, there is a, um, a little bit of an advantage, because when you've had somebody for a while, you know each other a little better, and you feel more at home. You feel more relaxed, and that's the way we are with you. Uh, in Sunday school, I taught on uh, lessons from misunderstood words and uh, taught about Jesus in John chapter 11. And so my uh, uh, brother Kemp said that you all were going to take an offering, an offering for me and Miss Wendy. And she nudged me when you said you're going to take an offering for uh, Pastor Lovins and Miss Wendy. So I felt this little nudge on my arm, and I turned around and looked at her, and she reminded me that her name was mentioned in the offering. And so the, I'm supposed to share that with her, I guess, was her intention. <clears throat> and I said to her, misunderstood words, misunderstood words. That's what that is. <laughs> I love Brother Jody. He helped me. I, I love it when you get help with your messages afterwards. Um, two illustrations, and I just laughed. I said, Brother Jody, I wish I'd have thought about that. That would have been perfect. And uh, the misunderstood words in the beginning were that I, I used the term, I don't care. And the guy, I meant it to be positive, and the guy took that as a negative. And then the guy that stood over me, and he was just really raising his voice and carrying on. And Brother Jody says, uh, I was anticipating instead of the three words, are you done? Uh, Brother Jody said, I was anticipating it had been a perfect place to have uh, inserted right there. I don't care. And I said, I wish I would have thought about that. That, that would have been true. I don't care. <laughs> uh, that is great. I love you people. We enjoy being here with you. So thank you, Pastor. Miss Felicia for allowing us to be here again. Uh, we love spending time with you. Psalms 122. Psalms 122. You have made reference to this verse, I'm sure, multiple times in your life. Psalms chapter 122. And look, if you would, at verse 1. Psalms 122 and verse 1. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. And let's pray together. Lord, thank you for all of the writings of the Bible and so much that we can learn from these men that you inspired the penning of these words. And then yet we get to see uh, uh, their personality even in, in the scripture that we can learn from. So we learn so much from David. I pray that today once again that you will guide in these next few minutes and that you use the preaching to be a help to somebody and we'll thank you for it in Jesus name amen we sing the song and one of my favorite songs and a song that we will often uh, close uh, at the uh, end of our services. We always close with a chorus of some sort. And there have been times that we have closed with this song or just sung it in the middle of the service. Everything's all right in my father's house, in my father's house, in my father's house. Everything is all right in my father's house where there is joy, joy, joy. 
David was going through some difficult times in his life, and, and if you study the life of David, I've always said there are so many things we can learn from David. Uh, one moment he's on a mountaintop, uh, living through a great victor in his life, and then another time in his life, um, falling into sin and being weak. And, and so we can learn from David and Peter in the New Testament, and uh, many times would yield to his flesh, but yet was very verbal about loving the Lord. And so we can learn from these individuals as well as Paul. But David said in Psalms 120, look if you would at verse 1, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. Look if you would uh, at chapter 121. And we could go through many of the Psalms and find illustrations of, of this point, but I thought we would just take these three chapters. And so David said, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. And, and chapter 121, verse 1, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. David said in these two chapters that I was going through some stressful times in my life. I was in distress. If you've studied the life of David, you know that there were times he struggled with the enemies that were against him. And, and he'd go to God and ask God for help and pray even for his enemies. And I have to admit, I've quoted some of David's prayers uh, throughout my life to take care of. I thought if David prayed it, I guess I ought to be able to pray it. And uh, so, uh, but he was in distress. Uh, and he says, I, I need help. There are many times in my life that he says I just I, I lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth so much so that, that David said when I'm in distress and I need help um, I'm glad when somebody says to me let us go into the house of the Lord. David said, I'm good with that. I want to go to the house of the Lord with the things that are going on in my life. Uh, that sounded uh, good to me. I don't know that they ever sang the song, Everything's All Right. In my father's house, in my father's house, in my father's house, everything is all right in my father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. You see, at God's house, and I, I mentioned it in Sunday school, I, it's become a, a phrase of mine and so much so that people have made plaques for me and engraved um, pieces of wood and, and somebody recently got a big piece of driftwood that's been in their house for a long time and, and they've been trying to figure out what can I do with that and they took it to an engraver and so I got this long piece of driftwood, it's got a lot of character and it's really unique they had engraved in inside of it god's people are the greatest people in the world and i have uh, multiple plaques in my office uh and, and statements on on my wall god's people are the greatest people in the world well god's people are at god's house so it's a little bit uh, it's pretty easy for us to say everything's all right in my father's house in my father's house in my father's house everything is all right in my my father's house where there's joy 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 because of God's people yeah. and so God's people helps there be joy in a father's house is it the father's house that we have God's Word isn't it wonderful to see how God's Word can be a help and a blessing to yeah. us and so many times we need something from the Lord and it just seems as though although it might be the next place that we're reading in our schedule of reading it, that God just knows that's exactly what we needed yes. on that day and there are some days that maybe I just needed something a little extra from the Lord and, and uh, I'll go to the Word of God and help find what I need uh, specifically. And so because of God's Word, we can say everything's all right in my Father's house, in my Father's house, in my Father's house. Everything's all right in my Father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. Because God's people are at God's house and God's Word is at God's house and God's music music is at God's house. I, I've enjoyed the music and, and the, the quartet that y'all just sang together. 
I, I leaned to my wife and, and said, they have a nice blend. You did a good job uh, with that. And, and the song selection and to see these young people <clears throat> up here singing. And uh, I love God's music. I, I, I just, boy, there's music sometimes I hear uh, that are good, godly Christian music that I move my emote with an emotion. And sometimes the tears, sometimes the shout, sometimes just the, the clapping of the hands. Uh, and God's music is the greatest music uh, in the world. So yeah, everything can be all right in God's house because we have God's music. And then of course, when we come to God's house, we always want the presence of God. And so when, when God shows up and meets with us, it's easy for us to say, everything's all right in my Father's house. In my Father's house, in my Father's house, everything really is all right in my Father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. But I've titled the message this morning, But What About Your House? What about your house? Well, we come to church and everything's okay at the church house. Everything's okay at God's house. I, that's one of the reasons why I believe God gave us uh, the church of God so that we can come and, and uh, uh, know that we have this place of refuge that we can come to. Yeah. The truth is, some of you have probably been beat half to death by the devil in the last week or two. And, and just to be able to come to God's house is a joy. Yeah. So you're not lying when you come and we sing everything's all right in my father's house, in my father's house, in my father's house. House. Everything really is all right in my father's house. But what about my house? What about my house? Well, I'm going to give you a few questions this morning that, and hopefully some help when we look at this area of, of what about your house or why it's not all right in your house. Well, if it's not all right in your house, I want you to ask yourself the question, why is it not all right in your house? Yeah. And the truth is, if it's not all right in your house, you know why. You know why. Because all of us, when we fall apart, we usually know the reasons behind why we have fallen apart. We know why our life's a mess. We know why things aren't all right. And so you have to ask yourself, why is it not all right in my house? Well, I have to admit, there have been times through the years that I've dealt with worry. I've fretted over circumstances. I could go through a few years of my life that was such a learning experience for me that going through the, the sickness and death of two parents and, and my mom and dad were both very active. My dad was a very hard worker. My mom was, I mean, just active and just and just full of life and full of joy. And and yet mom and dad both got Alzheimer's, dementia. And we had to deal with whether you put them in a nursing home or do you care for them yourself. And we had to deal with selling of properties and things that you were raised with all of your life and the house you were raised in and, yeah. and watching it being sold yeah. at an auction. Watching things that belong to your mom and dad as the community shows up and they're all excited because they showed up for a deal which I don't blame them, we're glad they were there. But yet, when you see the belongings, knowing you can't take all those belongings with you, you don't have room for it, and to do that to your kids as well, you just accumulate more junk in some cases. But it all had a sentimental value. And, and boy, I struggled. I struggled for a few years with the why and the timing. And I would deal with going to a nursing home and talking to a mother that couldn't respond as far as conversation and she'd just smile at you and clap her hands. And, and that's, you doing okay today, Mom? And, you know, you look pretty today, Mom. And whatever the conversation was, that's all Mom could do. 
and think you're having a good conversation with dad then you find out halfway in the middle of the conversation dad says something that's from way out there and then sometimes it was humorous and sometimes it was sad yeah. and it's like Lord I struggle with this and I'd go and ask the Lord to take mom and dad because they both born again Christians then I'd feel selfish feel wrong like I'm the pastor of the church I ought to know all the answers to all of this and yet everything was all right in my father's house everything was all right at New Heights Baptist Church just like everything's all right today when you showed up and you put the smile on your face and you turned on the joy and you turned on the happiness and you turned on the I love everybody attitude. The truth is, when you go home, it's not all right. And there's a reason. There's a reason why it's not all right. So if it's not all right at your house, you got to ask the question. And be honest. Why is it not all right? Yeah. I'd go and sit on the back swing and look out over our backyard and drink coffee and swing and tears would just run down my cheeks knowing that it's not all right at my house everything's not okay here life's not okay I'm struggling so no I, yeah, yeah we, we want to close with the song everything's all right in my father's house sure everything is all right in here but not at my house yeah. everything's not all right at my house so you have to ask yourself why is it not all right at your house and second of all then if it's not all right at your house why don't you work on fixing what is not right at your house yeah now i'm not trying to be silly or sarcastic but i mean some things we can fix and if you can fix it fix it misunderstood words I talked about it this morning so reword some things and relax and calm down and go get some misunderstood words taken care of fix it yeah if your relationship isn't right then fix it quit being so hard and cold and mean at everybody and fix it just fix it if things aren't okay financially then work hard at fixing it get a different job get another job maybe start tithing I don't know do a budget you know fix it whatever whatever you need to do to fix it and so if it's not all right then fix what is not right and then this one's a little bit of a tough one but the truth is you can't always fix what's not right I couldn't fix mom and dad yeah right I, I, as much as I wanted to fix it I couldn't fix it and it went way too long. You'd hear somebody's, I'd hear somebody's mom and daddy that were diagnosed with Alzheimer's and then a year or two later they pass away. Because usually, most of the time, it's a, not that long of a drawn out thing. But boy, it was with mom and dad. It was just like, wow. People even told us it's very unusual. Uh, mom I think had Alzheimer's for 12 years dad for uh, six I think four or five six somewhere around in there and it's like I can't fix this I wish I could fix it but I can't you know there are some things that have happened to you in the past I hate to tell you but you aren't going to fix it there are consequences that you're dealing with. You aren't going to fix it. We can fret over trying to fix it. It's not going to be fixed, y'all. There are some things that some decisions we make that you're not going to get a redo. Yeah. And, and so then if you can't fix it, then what do we do? You have to learn to trust the Lord. When you can't fix it, I don't know how many times I got on my knees and said, okay, Lord, this doesn't make sense. I can't fix it. And so I'm just going to trust you. 
by the way, that's easier said than done, too. Yeah, that's right. And I don't know how many times I got on my knees and said, okay, Lord, I give, give myself to you. I'm going to trust you. And then you get up off your knees, knowing good and well. They, I mean, minutes after I got up off my knees of telling the Lord I'm going to trust him and know in my heart, are you really? Because if I'm really trusting Him, how come I still sense this pressure? How come it's, I feel like it's still there? Yeah. And so, it, for the things you can't fix, you're going to have to trust the Lord. And so, there are some times that, you know, and I think I will give you, I sort of skip over a few things, but I think I'll give you these, these others. So if it's not all right at your house, why is it not all right? Then try to fix what's not right. And then if you can't fix what is not right, you just have to learn to trust the Lord. And then, it's kind of redundant, but I'll go ahead and say this. You're going to have to just get with the Lord and... and I guess I'll word it in this way. Maybe it's a little bit of a worldly term, but you're just going to have to get with Jesus meeting. Yeah. You're just going to have to get with Jesus meeting. And my wife has a little plaque that, that says, she's, we're kind of conscious of it because we don't mean to be sacrilegious about it, but uh, I think it's over the Christmas time or maybe we leave it up all the time. It's a little plaque, a little piece of wood and, uh, that has a saying engraved in it and it has it on and one of our little side tables. It says, you all need Jesus. And with my family, there's more truth to that than what we like to admit. You all need Jesus. And so <laughs> the truth is, some of the things we can't fix, Sometimes that's the only answer. I just need Jesus. That's, you know, our, our daughter-in-law said about our youngest grandson, he has had quite the attitude. He's finally mellowing out, and he's just the greatest little kid. But boy, when he was younger, uh, his mom said all the time about him that uh, Levi just needs Jesus. That's what he needs. He just needs to get saved. We can't wait on that kid to get saved. And so sometimes you just have to get with Jesus and just have your time of... Uh, uh, of go to Jesus meeting and you're going to have to ask God for help and 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 boy I guess I've got this term relax and work hard and um, my Sunday school lesson relax calm down and so if it's not all right in your house and why is it not all right try to fix what is not right if you can't fix it then just try to trust the Lord and sometimes you just got to start over you got to start fresh you got to ask God for help and relax and work hard Paul Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, I labor more abundantly. By the grace of God, he said, I am what I am. And so some things you can't fix, y'all, but it doesn't mean you quit working. You just work hard at it and just keep trusting the Lord. Well, then, if it's not all right in your house, then the second point is, then you need to get to the Father's house. If it's not all right in your house, you need to get to the Father's house. That's why you showed up today, isn't it? The truth is, you knew you needed this morning. Yes. You knew you needed to get in the house of God because at the house of God, you know everything's all right at your Father's house. And when it's not all right at your house, you can get to the church house where everything is all right. And, and that's why David said, I was glad. Man, I, I, it's coming from all sides. I'm in distress. And somebody said, let's go to the house of God. And David said, that made me glad. Yeah. That made me glad. I'd have people uh, throughout pastoring, I've had people that have called. And, and, you know, we live in a day and age, you can't leave the church doors unlocked anymore. But my generation, when I was younger, all the churches were just unlocked. And you could go in and just spend time with the Lord because it was a sacred time. You didn't have to get permission from the pastor. You just went to the house of God because you needed to be at the house of God. And there were times, uh, there have been times throughout pastoring, and that 
that, that people would just have so many things going on and because things weren't all right at their house, they needed to get to the Father's house and they just say, Preacher, uh, uh, can you make sure the church is unlocked? I've had them call in the wee hours of the morning, early hours of the morning, late hours at night and say, Preacher, I'll lock things up when I leave, but if, you, if you'll just let me get into the church, I just need to spend some time by myself walking around God's house and, and you see, uh, there have been times that I've done the same. I just needed to go to the place of God, especially during COVID. There were times that I'd walk around in our auditorium and I know everybody had to make the decisions they, they felt like they needed to make and so we live stream for a little while, but I'd go to the house of God and weep. Nobody being there. I'd go there and weep and, and call out to God and, and walk through the pews and pray for our people and understanding that the house of God was never meant to be empty. And, and, and I'd go there and pray for the times that well, I remember when we came back to the house of God. Look y'all, there's something special yes, sir. about going to the house of God. Yes, sir. That's why uh, and David said, I'm glad when they said, let us go to the house of God, David said, I was glad about that. And so everything is all right at God's house. But what do we do when things aren't all right at our house? Then we need to get to the Father's house. And then after we get to the Father's house and then this whole process, we need to get the presence of His house in our house. That's good. In order for everything to be all right in our house, we have to get the presence of His house in our house. Yeah. It amazes me. I'm not going to preach at you this morning. But it amazes me how worldly people live this day and age. Yeah. Come on. I'm serious about that. Yeah, come on. Some of the habits, some of the actions, some of the things that we think is okay. Come on. Yep. And I'm going, really? No wonder your house is falling apart. No wonder everything's not all right at your house. It's like you've forgotten God. Yeah. And I tell you what we need more than anything. I think we need the presence of God's house in our house. We need to have those places in our own house. I know I was going through a difficult time, but all over our house, there are times I'd mentioned I go out in the back swing. Boy, there have been a lot of prayers that gone up off of that back swing where I've said, God, I need the presence of your house at my house. There are times I'd sit at the kitchen table and weep. Times I've turned around and knelt at the kitchen table and said, God, I need the presence of your house at my house. Yeah. There were times I've knelt in the living room by the couch and by the chair and, and just got on my knees and wept knowing that I wasn't in really good shape because I needed the presence of God's house in my house. There have been times in the bedroom that I've gotten on my knees beside the bed and I've said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. I need the presence of your house in my house and because everything is not all right in my house and, and I know at your house everything's all right and we're not lying by singing the song and I'm glad we can get there with God's word and God's people and God's music and, and I'm glad when I can go to God's house and, 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 and boy we get excited about all of that and, and sing the song everything's all right in my father's house and, but it's not all right in my house and I'd work on it and all of these different things and so then I just say I have to get to the father's house where I can get some uh, uh, get the peace of God that passes all understanding and even more so than any of all of these others. We need to get the presence of God in our house. Yeah, Have you forgotten him? Do you try to do it all on your own? I'm going to tell you all sometimes God's going to allow you to be in a position where you can't do it. You can't fix it. Yeah. As hard as you try. You're going to wear yourself out sometimes trying. There's where you just have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I want everything to be all right. 
not only in your house, but I want everything to be all right also in my house. Is everything all right in your house? If not, you're in a good place to help things get right at your house because you're in God's house where everything is all right in your Father's house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And let's pray together. Lord, thank you that we can come and to a sacred place, to your house, the place of God, Bethel and El Bethel. And so, Lord, we're thankful that you've given us your house. And we need to come to your house so we can be rejuvenated and revived and, and then to take the presence of your house to our house and everywhere else we go so that we can sing wherever we go, everything is all right. Not only in my Father's house, but also in my house. Lord, use the message. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.